How's it going guys? This is Mark with At Tech. In this video, we're gonna be checking out a couple of power over ethernet switches. This one is from MokerLink and this one is from Yunli. They're very similar in functionality, but they are a little bit different as well. We're gonna take a look at which one you may want to use for your use case and overall why you'd want a power over ethernet switch. So first of all, what are these and what do they do? Well, power over ethernet sends power to your internet device along with its internet signal. This means that a single ethernet cable can not only send data to your device, but it can also power it. These are commonly used in surveillance setups as well as Wi-Fi routers. Oftentimes businesses and hotels will have power over ethernet routers because it's just a lot easier to have one single cable going to their access point rather than needing an additional power adapter. It's also great for surveillance setups because again, you only need one cable and that handles both power and data. You do need specialized devices that can actually output power over ethernet and that's why you would need a PoE switch. Now, if you don't have a PoE switch, you need something like this. This is a PoE injector. What it does is it takes power on one end, it takes LAN on this end, and it combines both of those and outputs them on a single ethernet cable. This is great if you only have one thing you need to power, or if it's not an issue to have all this extra cable bulk. Because we need one cable coming in, one cable coming out, and then another one for power. That's three cables, or you could just have one. So that's where these come in right here. All you do is you plug this into your wall, you plug your internet in on the side, and then your cable coming out is fed with both internet and power. One thing to note about these switches is that they both have two internet ports. That means that there's two lines of internet coming in to the switch. You don't usually see that on normal switches, and in fact, most switches don't even have a dedicated port for your line in. Most of them just have a bunch of ports and you can plug in your internet on whichever one you want. These ones have two because they are actually meant for surveillance setups and it's actually really cool why you would want two of them. So let's say that we have our security camera plugged in like we do right here. Well, where is this going to record to? Chances are you're gonna have a server or an NVR on your network and that is gonna to need to be connected to your camera somehow. If you don't wanna be going through a bunch of other switches, you could actually plug your NVR into one of these ports right here. Then let's say you want to access those cameras remotely, or let's say you also have a Wi-Fi router plugged in. You could use the second port on there to have your internet in. So you can feed your internet into the switch as well as your data out to an NVR on separate ports. You don't need to have one single port going to another switch, which is then fed with internet and your NVR. It's actually kind of cool. You can consolidate your use into one single product, and that's actually pretty useful. Continuing about what's common among these two switches is the two internet ports, but we also have the ability to plug in non-PoE devices into these switches. They're smart enough that you won't PoE your laptop and kill the port with power. It detects whether it needs power or not, and then it will turn that on and off accordingly. So you can use these as a traditional switch. You don't need to have a normal switch in your network setup along with these ones. If you only have a limited number of devices you need to plug in, you can use this as a normal switch. You won't be getting power if you don't need it, which is very nice. Both of these support the 802.3 AF and AT standards for power. That means that you can pretty much power any device that is relatively modern and even fairly old ones as well, as long as they support that standard, which again is most devices, you should have no problem powering them. One thing both of these switches have is a toggle to switch between your standard and your E plus V mode. The default mode works as a normal switch would along with your power, and that power can be run for up to 100 meters. Now your E plus V mode stands for extended and VLAN. With that enabled, you can get power up to 250 meters, but by doing that, you have to enable VLAN. And what it does by switching it to the E plus V mode is that each port is independent from one another, meaning that if I plug something in on port one, I can't access what's on port one through port two. Now let's talk about the differences between these two. This one up here has only four ports, but it is a gigabit switch, meaning that not only do you get a thousand megabits per second on your internet, but you also get a thousand on your devices connected to it. 
This one down below has eight ports, but these are only 10 100, meaning you can only go up to 100 megabits per second rather than 1,000. So you're going to want to determine your use case for your switch based on which one you get. The pricing is going to vary based on whether you want gigabit or fast. If you are only using a security camera on your switch and you're not planning on plugging in non-PoE devices, then you may not need a gigabit switch. But if you're going to be connecting wireless access points to it, you may want to consider a gigabit option. It just depends what you want. Really, there's not a reason you should ever get a fast switch anymore. It should always be gigabit. But if price is a factor um, and you don't need, you know, a thousand megabits per second of bandwidth, then it is possible that you could get a fast switch like this one. It's really up to what you need, whether your camera can utilize a thousand megabits per second or if you're not going to get any advantages by spending more money for a faster switch. The bottom one right here also has an SPF port. It's really not an exciting port. It's only gigabit and it's only for internet in. That is pretty much the use of this SPF port. If you happen to have a fiber connection with your internet, sure, you could do it in here, but you don't really have to. It's not really um, something you need, um, but you do have the option. One thing to note is that even though this one is a fast switch, we do have two gigabit ports right here, as well as this SPF, which is also gigabit. So while your device is only 100 megabits per second, any internet you get coming into the switch is going to be 1,000, so that's pretty nice. These are very basic switches, so they are unmanaged, meaning you just plug it in and they work. There is no web interface. So if you're looking for that, you may want to consider some other option, but if you're new to networking, you just want a PoE switch, these are a very good option. On the back, it's actually pretty simple. We've got a power port with an integrated power supply, so all you have is a cable. And then we also have our lightning protection, so you can hook this up to a ground if you so desire. And that's pretty much it. You plug it in, you plug your device in, you plug your internet in, and it's up and running. Pretty simple and easy. Both of these switches do come with rack mounting hardware. The only issue is that the little ears that go on the side are not the standard width of a rack. As you can tell, this is fairly narrow, where a rack mount is probably about that wide. So it's a little odd. You can't mount it in a traditional rack, but if you happen to come across something that is that width, it will work. Overall, I'm a big fan of these switches. They work really nicely, and I like the fact that you can plug in something that doesn't need power. If you only want one switch in your setup, you can get a more port switch and you can still plug in traditional devices. It's also cool that you can extend the range of your power if you so need it. And it is somewhat advantageous to enable VLAN on these so that cameras can't cross communicate with each other and have any signal intercepted. So it's actually pretty nice. Overall, I'm a big fan of these. They aren't too expensive, around 50 to $60 for these. So links will be down below if you wanna pick these up. Other than that, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching as always. This is Mark with That Tech, and I will see you in the next one.